For our topic, we have a really interesting one. We did dicots. So what are dicots? They're basically an angiospermous plant with two cotyledons. And cotyledons are basically just the seed leaves that absorb nutrients within the seed until the plant can produce true leaves and begin to photosynthesize. And we inserted a picture on this slide of the monocot versus a dicot so that you can have a visual representation of the difference. So for some characteristics of dicots, again, they have two cotyledons, which are the seed leaves within one seed. And then they also have four distinct structural differences from monocots. And these are leaves, stems, roots, and flowers. So for the leaves, dicots have leaves with branching veins as seen in this photo. And then for the stems, they are arranged into a donut looking structure. As for the roots, dicots contain one main root called a taproot. And then flowers, dicot flowers are typically in groups of four or five. Here are some examples of plants that are dicots. There are over 200,000 species that fall under dicots, which makes them a large group with significant diversity. There are, are, there are a variety of flower, vegetable, and tree species that are classified as a dicot. Some examples include roses, geraniums, soybeans, carrots, oak trees, and dandelions. And here are some images of the examples. Bean seeds are an example of a dicot because when beans are soaked in water for a day or two, they have a soft outer coating called a seed coat. The bean seed has a split going down the middle and inside there's a tiny plant called an embryo. These two large parts of the seed are called cotyledons. And because the bean seed has two main parts, that's what makes it a dicot. And you can see in the image in the bottom corner, that's what a bean seed would look like. That's a dicot versus a corn seed, which is an example of a monocot. Why are dicot plants important? Dicot plants are ecologically important. All the major forest trees are dicots. All the flowery vines and fruit bearing bushes are also dicots. So if you think about it, dicots give us the timber industry and the wine industry. They give us delicious grapes and raspberries. The flowers on your coffee table is also an epitome of dicot plants. Some examples include grapevines, raspberries, plant, maple plant, daisies, dandelions, and magnolia bushes. How does this happen? Once pollinated, two sperms drop into the embryotic sac, where one will fuse with the egg to form a zygote, and the other will fuse with the two nuclides of the central cell and become an endosperm nucleus, double fertilization. The zygote is now a diploid and endo endosperm nucleus is triploid. The endosperm nucleus undergoes mitosis to form the endosperm of the seed. The zygote then go undergoes a series of mitocotic division to form an under-deficient embryo. The root will begin to grow and develop into another one, moncot, or two dicots. There are many fun facts about dicots. One fun fact is there are about 175,000 known species of dicots, half of which are woody. The world's largest flower, Rafflesia arnoldi, is a dicot. You can see the picture on the right of the, of the slide. It can grow to over three feet wide and emits a smell like rotting flesh. It attracts pollinators such as beetles and flies. The Welwitzia mirabilis, a dicot found in Nambi Desert, can live for over 1,000 years. It produces only two leaves throughout its life, which can continue to grow and it can reach lengths over 13 feet. The, ca the Keiko tree, Theobroma cacao, a dicot, gives us chocolate, but it also plays a significant role in ancient Mesoamerican cultures, where cacao beans were so valuable they were used as currency. 
The camu camu berry, a small dicot fruit from the Amazon rainforest, is one of the richest sources of vitamin C on the planet, containing up to 60 times more than an orange. It's a powerhouse for immune support and has incredible antioxidant properties. You can see this berry on the side of the screen.